Friday, July the 16th, 2021, the day after St. Swithin's. And uh, the first of the 40 days is certainly wonderful. Got a nice cool breeze from the north, northeast, and it's around 24 at the minute, I'd say. Well, in fact, my GPS tells me that. But uh, cracking walking weather. And today I'm over at Bidnam, which is um, northeast, sorry, northwest of Bedford. Small village uh, that I'm tagging on to a North Hearts Ramblers Walk, number 216, uh, which is a Stevington Circular. Their version is only six miles long. So I've decided to walk from here, which is St. James's Church, Bidnam, and um, double it up. So it's going to be about 12 miles, I think. It's one o'clock, and I'm praying, I'm in the right place to do so, that this walk is a damn sight better than last week's. As I say, it's uh, a North Heights Ramblers one, so it ought to be. I do note on the map that there is a bit of um, minor road walking, but how precarious that is remains to be seen. Uh, I'll have to time my walk in such a way as to avoid the school pickup time and uh, any other sort of rush hour. But let's see how it pans out. So here we go. Let's press on. It's one o'clock on the button. Uh, you've just missed the chimes or the chime at St. James's here. And I didn't know that St. James is the son of Zebedee. I thought, you know, Zebedee was just a character on the Magic Roundabout, but uh, by all accounts, he is real, or was. We're uh, following the John Bunyan trail initially, if I remember. Uh, in fact, I got that wrong. It's the North Beds Heritage Trail. But we do um, utilise the John Bunyan trail at points. And this is nice, isn't it? The old coffin path to Bidnam. Wonderful bit of history here. Our onward journey straight ahead. And there's an information panel here about the Bidnam Heritage Trail. Lovely little village, Bidnam. And it has a private BMI hospital in it where I had my ankle assessment a couple of weeks ago. I was going to do the walk then, but the weather wasn't so great. In fact, it was pouring with rain. So I decided to defer it. And St James and Zebedee have looked down on me by the looks of it. Well, there we go. Planning proposal for another 119 properties. So that's got me off on a bad footing already. Outrageous, isn't it? So there you go, another encroachment into the countryside, eh? It's just ceaseless, relentless. Anyway, I've got to get across an A road at the top here. Can't blame the Ramblers for this, this is uh, my add-on. So having got across that busy A road, we now join the Bidnam Heritage Trail. And what a lovely wild uh, meadow we have here. Absolutely humming with wildlife. Brilliant. Little bit of road walking here across this bridge with appropriate uh, passing points. Entering the small town of Bromham. Lovely selection of willows there. I do believe this is the Great Ooze. Passing Bromham Mill. So here we go from another angle. So as you can see we're now joining the Ooze Valley Way in a little lane called Millfield. Two possible routes here, neither of them marked, but I'm going to gamble on the left-hand one. 
passing a little conservation area there on my right and uh, now entering private land which as you can see has been uh, cut recently, the hay I think Bromham Church over there on my right couldn't tell you the name of that at the moment but I will do later when I write this up So there you go, another unusual dedication, St Owen. We had a couple of those last week, unusual ones. Interesting uh, bit of inscription there on this C of E school. I wonder if anyone knows what that's about. I certainly don't. So this is Bromham Village Hall, which is another possible starting point for this walk. I'm just over a mile in now. Well, unfortunately, I just lost about 10 minutes uh, following the wrong path into a school. <laughs> anyway, back on track now, I do believe, following a path around this green. OK, uh, two mile in now finally got back on track hopefully done with the residential walking for a while as well so uh, let's press on quite a decent wooded scene on my left having just uh, walked up alongside Bowles Wood About 230 foot up here, once again I haven't got the height ranges, OS maps, I haven't sorted that out yet, but uh, as you can see there are a fair number of wind farms out on the horizon, creeping in from the sea now. as well as the old traditional pylons. This poor solitary ash has got die back. Got this wonderful wild flower strip. Very rarely see this in Hertfordshire. Absolutely beautiful, buzzing, literally. All the pollinators love this uh, nap, wild nap seed isn't it yeah now passing broad beans one of my favorites straight on at this juncture through that carefully manicured path there's the old wind farms over there in the distance on my Two o'clock direction, really, from where I'm stood. Former cottage here, I think it's Skylark on the map. Continuing along the Ouse Valley and John Bunyan Trail to Stevington here. And that's uh, one of today's highlights, Stevington Windmill. So we're getting near to the start of the Ramblers Walk. It's about 2.7 mile in now. So uh, I anticipate three before I join their version. much superior walk already today than last week thankfully and with a small diversion of half a mile you can branch off here to go and see the windmill but I won't be I can do that half a mile with this uh, zoom 
So one final view of the windmill. Getting a bit cloudy actually. I was expecting crystal or whatever colour blue is. Clear blue skies today. Not to worry though, can't complain. So our onward journey actually is following the finger post to Stevington Windmill. Nice memorial chair there from Ian Pickup with a nice canal barge next to it. He must have enjoyed barging. With a view directly to the windmill. Bit of road walking here with no uh, path. The old water pump there. Another chapel on the old Bunyan Trail that's going to disappear into residential or be knocked down. Interestingly, it used to be an organ builder's uh, workshop. But originally a uh, Methodist chapel, as you can see. Eighteen sixty-five. There is a footpath marker there, which I'm going to follow. It's not on the original GPS track, uh, which takes you along the road, probably for parking purposes when they created the walk but this will get me to the same destination eventually. Passes through what appears to be someone's garden, I think. Former orchard as well. Wonderful. Nice lunchtime spot there. <laughs> Talking of which, it's half past two already. I'm slightly behind schedule. Now clearly there is water in this stream at some, <coughs> some time of the year judging by the number of bridges it's bone dry right now which doesn't bode well considering the wet spring we've had well at times it was torrential just washes off though flash flooding wonderful spread of some lilac flower there in amongst the oxides if anyone recognises that Okay, so I passed two, and although I was uh, going to press on and bypass this church for lunch, because of the time, I think this, this would make, uh, and the way this church setting looks, I think this will make a nice lunchtime break, and I'll then have an uh, eight mile to complete post lunch. So let's tuck in. St Mary the Virgin here. And another wonderful bit of architecture, eh? Do love our churches. Let's see if I can find a shady seat now. Well, it's nice and cool in that storm porch. And the door's actually open, but I won't venture in just yet. Still a bit cautious. There's my seat in the shade. Wonderful. And thanks to Harry and Joan Pearson. So I'm passing a holy well apparently. Quarter past three now, lunch has been had. Let's go and make a wish in the holy well. Well, this is wonderful. I forget the name of this sort of giant rhubarb leafed plant. Gives off a bit of an aroma, but wonderful. Just to the rear of the church here. And here is said holy well. So let's make a couple of wishes, eh? Wonderful scenery on my right. 
freshly cut hay with the uh, attached smell and nice willows there. Let's just hope there's not um, too much road walking towards the end because so far this walk's been excellent. Certainly made up for last week. Now my GPS track tells me I've nine miles to do uh, with my add-ons. I've done four so this looks like it might turn out to be my longest walk of the year. But that's no worry on a day like today. Fantastic weather. I see the sheep over there have got the right idea. Well most of them have. All under the uh, is that a chestnut? That's the old, no it isn't, some kind of pine. But uh, whatever the old uh, song is about the old uh, spreading chestnut tree, underneath the boughs of the spreading chestnut tree, can't remember what it is. Anyway, good on them. Ah, there they are. Knew there'd be some around. Thankfully the other side of the fence. See really this is how footpaths should be left. There's a base to it which uh, stops you getting all the seeds in your shoes as I did last week. And the um, grasses, although long at the moment, will die back naturally. There's no brambles interfering because they've been cut back over time anyway and they've learnt not to grow in the path of passing humans. And this is just the kind of cool tree cover that you need on a day like today. Wonderful. Interspersed with uh, open field walking, top up your suntan. Lovely. Sounds a bit ominous. I wonder if there's cattle about. Hope not. Inevitable though when you're doing a, a walk in the meadows associated with a big river. Looking back down the ooze, the great ooze to distinguish it from other oozes. Do love this willow. Wonderful shimmer to it. Cracking walk. Glad I chose this one so far. Little warning here about muddy footpath. So hopefully it won't be too bad today. Yeah, it looks like someone's put a bit of a boardwalk in. There's today's death, a little mole. Surprised the um, kites haven't seen him, but then again, I haven't seen any kites up here. Seen a couple of buzzards, but no kites yet. Ooze has opened up a bit now. Got past that boggy section, which I must admit, enough a stink. Natural sewerage coming out the ground by the looks of it. And on the other bank, a plantation of young willows. Lovely to see. And as I thought, I had to bypass that herd over there. They were more interested in their food than me though. And I had the higher ground. So thankfully uh, that's one down. There were cattle in that strip as well, but they were busy in the shade sitting down. So uh, second herd I've had a bit of luck with. There are plenty of butterflies around today. I've noticed marbled whites and speckled woods. Uh, speckled woods apparently are in short supply this year. But this weekend I believe is the butterfly count uh, when 
the Butterfly Conservation Trust, I think it is, ask people to count what they see. But, uh, and moths as well. So now in the uh, village of Pavenham, and we leave the John Bunyan Trail stroke Ooze Valley path. Take this foot public footpath up here. It's obviously a bit out of date now, June, but they do uh, make reference there to some orchids. Bee orchid, for example, and the pyramidal orchid. So, uh, sounds promising. Field of rape on my left. Now through that hole in the hedge there, and uh, we rejoin the Hughes Valley Path, I think, and the John Bunyan Trail. There's the ghost of a, an old bulldozer as we pass this uh, rather derelict cow yard. And we are back on the John Bunyan Trail now. Little monk jack there. Amazing, on a day like today you'd expect to see a common lizard or so sunbathing here, not a stitch. This barley is very close to maturity now. Another 10 days based on what that farmer told me two weeks ago. He said about three weeks. If the next week is forecast sunny as it's meant to be, it could be sooner. Combines will be out on my next walk possibly which is likely to be next middle of next week, I think. Very good manoeuvre there by the farmer. He's cut some of his uh, crop there to enable walkers to pass by because the actual real path would have gone through this bit of a quagmire on my left. So as you can see, more ash dieback, more ash trees. You can really now start to understand how important this tree is to the UK. Now coming out onto what I thought on paper might be the worst part of the walk today. Let's see. Don't know if there's a pavement on this road which is quite busy. This is Stafford Bridge on the map. And I've just done about 500 yards of uh, road walking. It is quite a busy road, but nothing like as bad as last week. You just have to be careful, and there is a verge that you can escape onto. And henceforth, we now have a footpath. Now entering the small town of Oakley. A bit of road walking here. With pavements, mind. Passing the Bedford Arms, Wells & Co, used to be Charlie Wells, don't know if they've changed the name, but uh, a Wells & Co pub now, on the high street here in Oakley. Just past the village hall, take this footpath, on the right, same side as the village hall, about 150 yards further on, which then brings you out into open country, well, for a short while anyway. Yeah, this barley is well cooked. Now I've got to get over Oakley Bridge, and I don't think that's got any escape routes. So yeah, no escape routes on that bridge, but it's not very long, 150 yards if that, but it is rush hour. So uh, I wasn't very popular. It's a bit like walking in front of a the hearse really, same sort of speed with me at the front, all the traffic behind me. 
Yeah, it's a bit of a rough old bridge as well. Lots of uh, unblocking required by the looks of it. Right, there's the seat, but where's the path? GPS track certainly shows this side of the river bank right tight to the river. So thankfully the foot uh, footpath is about another 50 yards on on your right not the one that leads to the seat which is confusing. They might have moved it following the uh, floods in 2013. Uh, I don't know when this GPS track was made but uh, that's possibly the good reason. Yeah, there's the old footpath over there, look. And it seems that a new weir has been built. So that might be the reason for the diversion and the alteration to the GPX track. These things happen. But the uh, authors of the GPS tracks should be updating them, keeping their eye on them, North Arts Ramblers. Looking back at the old bridge, Nice house there on the opposite bank, decent view, cut all the trees down mind you to get it, bang out of order isn't it, things people do for a view. Mind you in recompense, fair play to them, they've grown some new ones very close by that doesn't obstruct their view. Wonderful walking again. Reeds on my right, set aside on my left. Barley fields beyond that, and plenty of bird song, which for this time of the year is quite unusual. Mainly finches, goldfinches, I hear. Wonderful. Nice memorial there. Lovely position next to the river, possibly a runner. But look, 2014, uh, sorry, 2004, so that's 17 years ago. And this tree, which I think is a mountain ash, hasn't grown very far. So that shows you the issue we're going to have with replacing those uh, ash. Or it might be that he was a canoeist. There is a canoeing club or something there to do with canoes. AC might be something to do with that. I always think of athletics. So the GPX track would go back into Stevington that way for a couple of hundred yards and then we'd be replicating the walk I did earlier in the morning past Stevington Windmill. So I'm going to alter things slightly because of the add-on that I've put in. So we're now leaving the Rambler's GPX walk, 216. And I'm doing a left here, joining a footpath on the right that will take me back up to Skylark Cottage, which we passed this morning. And an information box here about the village. Google that if you wish to learn more. And a seat, strangely, in this lay-by. There is the windmill once again, in the distance. So very close to that lay-by is the bridleway sign, just about visible. And there's our onward journey. So we arrive back at this finger post where I went right to the windmill and came from this direction which is now my onward journey. Uh, so I won't be doing much filming now. Full steam ahead unless I see something uh, particularly interesting. We've already filmed this section. As I suspected, this is an old railway line, this uh, finger post. 
So that means that Skylark Cottage was probably connected with the railway and was a uh, guard's home or a, uh, a level crossing operator's home, something of the sort. Sad tale. Just seen a flock of goldfinches on this uh, knapweed. They love it. Now crossing over the bridge again at um, Bromham. Some serious rocks and boulders uh, in the river on this side. So obviously I'm now walking against the traffic on the right side of the bridge. Interesting duck down there. Where's it gone? No, I can't see it. Don't know what that is. So having got across that busy A road, we're nearly back. So here we are, just gone quarter past six and 12.4 uh, miles, four hours 34 later and that was a delightful walk. Makes up for the uh, poor one last week, eh? Cracking day, that helped. Uh, only one busy A road to cross and uh, minimal road walking which wasn't too bad overall wasn't too heavy on the cattle front either although they uh, could be a bit of an issue depending upon where they are in their fields at the time you cross them likewise mud could also be an issue in places but uh, any walk near a river is going to be like that at the wrong time of the year I mean it's definitely worth doing the six miler at the wetter times of the year but on a day like today the ramblers now have, a, have another option uh, and a very nice one to double up the walk to 12 miles or 12 near, nearly 12 and a half uh, although I am a bit worried about that building site that's about to be developed a couple of hundred yards away from me at the moment. Anyway, as I say, all in all, St Swithin has got us off to a good start. First day of St Swithin's um, today, following five or six is going to be pretty good as well. So hopefully I'll be out on my next walk during an equally good day. So until then, see you soon.